Let me see. Which one did I need? I think it was this one, right? I need two. Look how many dream solvents I have. Why do my voice just crack? Look how many dream solvents I have. <laughs> Why do I have so many? All right. Let's crown Navia. Give it Navia's Gunbrella a crown. Nice. My upstairs neighbor is doing upstairs neighbor's things. All right. But anyways. <clears throat> All right. So today we are doing Risley's story quest because we have Risley's to do and then Navia's and then we'll be caught up with the story quests until Cloud Retainers comes out. But after that, I'm still going to do try doing all the hangouts as well. So. I have no idea what Ryze's story quest is going to I, I kind of hope they explain like what he did to get sent to the Fortress of Meripede. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Maybe they'll leave, they'll leave that as like a mysterious part of Risley's story. But I hope to see what it's like at least. The volume. Your upstairs neighbors have a very squeaky bed. Uh-huh. I'm sure that's wonderful to hear at night. Okay. Fortress of Meripede would be super scary, but looking back on it, it really wasn't that bad at all. You've got a set schedule, guaranteed food and board, and you can even buy all kinds of stuff with credit coupons. It's really no surprise that many people don't even want to leave. I still haven't gotten the credit, the, the stuff from the credit coupon store. <laughs> I still have not done that yet. Oh, you mean Risley? He's definitely a pretty impressive leader. While he does look kind of intimidating, he's actually pretty easy to talk to once you've had a conversation or two with him. Paimo wonders how he's like with the people here. Do they also get the same guy we do, or is he a lot harsher with the bad guys? Mm, he probably has a good number of tricks for every situation. Yeah, he probably beats them up. That's what I feel. Bye, Vilmari. Yeah, he must be doing something right to maintain order here. While not making everything feel super oppressive. Excuse me, did I hear someone there? Could you please do me a favor? Huh? Uh, Paimon could have sworn she just heard something. Random British man in walls. <laughs> me too. Excuse me, is someone passing by? Could you do me a favor? <laughs> <laughs> it's a random dude in the walls. Is he in a chest? Did you hear my call? Uh, thank you so much. I'm over here, inside this big box. How did you get put inside of a box? Uh, you're inside the box? Is he getting bullied? No wonder Paimon didn't see anything. Well, come on, Traveler, let's go take a look. Did, how did she not think to look inside the box? Um, why are you hiding in here anyway? If we hadn't happened to pass by, you could have been stuck for days. Ah, it's a bit complicated. Uh, can we not talk about that for now? Did someone shave your eyebrows? Did someone strip you of your clothes? Whoa, that's terrible. Did someone seriously do that to you? No, no, it was nothing quite that serious. I I'd just like some help uh, finding my hat. Your hat? What? Just your hat? But then why can't you look for it yourself? Huh. <gasps> Wait, Pyron gets it. Something must have happened to your hair. 
<laughs> He's bald. <laughs> He's bald. <laughs> no. Bye, Mom. We don't have to ask. Sorry, sorry. So that's what happened. Paimon gets it now. <laughs> no wonder why you had to hide inside the box. Bald derogatory. You just need your hat, right? We'll get it back to you right away. What kind of hat was it? I think you may have misunderstood me, but... <sighs> Never mind. Please just help me find my hat. And bro accidentally clipped through the chest. He hit no clip and then he accidentally pressed pressed it again. It's a soft and brown hat with a bit of a brim. Nothing fancy. A Yankee with no brim. I think I probably lost it near the entrance elevator. It was getting a bit hot, so I took it off and had a quick nap. But oh, when I came to, it was gone. It's really important to me, so... Your help would mean the world. I'll wait here for your return. Don't worry, we'll be back in no time. Yankee with no brim. We'll go down here. Meow. Hyman doesn't see anything here. Well, let's go somewhere else. Bald people are red flags? True. There's something suspicious about not being able to grow anything on the top of your head. What are you hiding, huh? What is that thing? Oh, this is taking longer than Paimon thought. What are you hiding? Nothing in the water either. and still not seen anything that looks like a hat. Mm, we could just buy him one. Huh, that's a good idea. If he's just looking to cover his head, then it shouldn't matter what kind of hat he's wearing. Why don't we check out the rag and bone shop? If memory serves, they got all kinds of stuff in there. Mm, I'm only playing for the hat, though. Huh? How did you know what Paima was thinking? <laughs> oh, this is bad. Nothing gets past you nowadays. Well... First. What happens when you spend three years with somebody? They have already they've already noticed your habits by now, Paimon. <laughs> British and French people are red flags. True. Speak uh, your truth. Paimon doesn't remember you being the boss. <laughs> I'm just standing in for Mr. Alvar while he's off restocking the shop. Now, just wait a sec. A blonde foreigner dressed all in white, accompanied by a glaze-covered flying chunk of gingerbread. Well, you must be the legendary traveler and their companion Paimon. Yeah, that's up. No. That's us. Uh, well, you're half right. Paimon's the traveler's treasured companion, sure, but she's not some flying chunk of gingerbread. You sure about that? Sorry, sorry, I just... I never thought I'd get the chance to see you with my own eyes, so got a bit ahead of myself. I think that's another emergency food joke. <laughs> I hope you find it in your magnanimous heart to forgive my discourtesy. I'm just a nobody, after all. There's no need to put yourself down like that. Paimon's just venting. Why, your heroic actions at Araneus have long made their way to the fortress of Meripede. We heard that you were personally received by his grace when you made your way down here, you know. Ah, you were the envy of all. And you're one of his grace's favorite people, so of course, everyone wants to be introduced to you. Why is he Australian? Well, they do kind of... I did kind of call this the Australia of Tevat, so... I guess it fits. <laughs> uh, so it's because of him. Hmm. And here I thought I'd made it as a hero. <laughs> well, I figure you'd appreciate honesty over flattery. After all, I also only joined up here because I'd heard Mr. Alvar was a good friend of the Duke. And though I've only caught scant sight of his grace since then, as fate would have it, I've become fast friends with Mr. Alvar himself. I mean, we've all got agendas, but rather than trying to force something to be true, it's often better to just go with the flow. I think he sounds more British. Oh, so now you're trying to kiss up to us. Guy sounds like a bruv. Well, I did mean it when I called you legends, and it is indeed an honor to meet the two of you. 
Oh, enough of that. Is there something you're looking for? <laughs> a man's a hat. No problem. Anything else? Hey, feel free to check out anything you want. The credit coupon costs are on me. Wait, but that's... Uh, you don't have to be so nice. Well, it's not like I'm getting paid to watch this shop. It's not more, getting paid. It's Mr. Alvar usually lets me just take my pick of our goods. Oh. Life's been pretty good recently, so I might as well just wave your bill. Never hurts to make some friends. Well, if you put it that way, that's pretty good then. All right, Pima will take a look. Are you sure you don't want more? These opportunities don't come by every day, you know. Yeah, I'm good, mate. It's all right. Two will do. Uh, I never thought you'd turn out a chance to freeload. Uh, it just doesn't feel the same if the owner's offering everything to you for free. But anyway, we don't need to get into that right now. We can discuss pymonology later. That poor guy must still be waiting for us. Uh, thank you so much. We'll be off then. No problem, and thank you for your patronage. I'd appreciate it if you could put in a nice word for our establishment the next time you speak to His Grace. That's a real sneaky way of getting good reviews. <laughs> We've been gone a while. Paimon hopes that guy in the box hasn't passed out from lack of air. Uh, he probably did. That seemed like a pretty, uh, a pretty tightly closed chest, I'm not gonna lie. We might open it and uh, find a corpse in there. Mm, where's the elevator? He's a red flag because he's British. No show is a good show that I think everyone should watch. Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders is actually peak. Probably one of the best TV shows I've watched. Ever. You can come out now. We found your hat. It's, a, it's British, but it's very good. It's a very, very good British show. You did? Oh, Archon, you just saved my life in just one sec. Hmm. <laughs> He had a hat. Actually bald? You've got such a full head of hair, too! Bro, why do you need a hat, then? <laughs> I mean, I told you that there had been a misunderstanding. This has nothing to do with my hair. <laughs> he just likes his hat. Wait, uh, uh, this isn't my hat. Well, we got you a new one. We tried really hard to look for your hat, but no dice. To be precise, someone else gave it to us. See, thank you so much. I'm really grateful, but unfortunately, there's just something special about my hat. Does it have some kind of sentimental value? But, um, uh, uh. sorry, I can't uh, explain at the moment. Time's tight as well, so I suppose I'll keep looking for a while. Okay. If you're looking for a hat, oh. I just picked one up over here. Is it yours? Your Grace! Huh. Oh, Hi, Risley. Hey, Risley. It's been a while. He just picked up and left. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a slow day today, so I decided to go for a little stroll. Even if your workspace isn't cramped, it's still good to get some air. I'll say I'm not at all surprised to find the two of you here. You never could turn down someone's request for help. That is his hat. Dude, it is! <laughs> Look at his hat. <laughs> it's what good adventurers do after all. Holy shit, that is so British. Is that so? Maybe I should consider asking the Adventurer's Guild to open a branch here. As I recall, these hats are very important to members of the Beret Society. Best you avoid misplacing it again, hmm? You might not have the same luck next time. Uh, understood. Th thank you so much, Your Grace. Then, uh, then I'll be off. Um, bye. I'll get going now. And... <laughs> Oh, shy. What a strange guy. Why did he care so much about his hat? Mm. Tommy Shelby memes are worth it to see them in the show. Yeah. No fucking fighting. Oh, and has he done something wrong? When he saw you, it was as if he'd seen a ghost. 
Oh, not at all. In fact, members of the Beret Society are model prisoners. They work hard and never get into trouble. They save me a lot of work, in fact. As for him, I'd guess he's just more of an introvert. It's not unusual for the more shy prisoners to freak out when I show up unannounced. Huh? Shy? There are prisoners who are afraid to talk to people? Yeah, nobody is as con <laughs> as socially, I guess, adept as you are, Paimon. Prisoners are still people, after all. There are as many crimes and motives as there are stars in the sky. The idea of the criminal as a selfish, heartless brute is just a stereotype. Such labels could never capture the complexity of even a single individual person. What kind of a person a prisoner may be and, and why they've committed a crime? We'd never know these things if they don't share their story with us. Huh. You've got a point. Anyway, it's all good as long as it makes sense to you. What's this beret society? Although most of the societies here will just turn individual brawls into mass ones, the beret society does appear to be an exception, and it's instead trying to experiment with some novel and interesting things. If you have some time, why don't we grab something at the coupon cafeteria? It'll give us time to catch up, too. Sure. And if you're still interested in the berets after that, I can take you to their usual gathering place as well. Nice. Hi, Biggest fan of that cafeteria, but if we're gonna catch up, let's go. All right then, please follow me. I really like his earrings on the side. Like I like the um, what are these called? I think they're are these the cartilage earrings, the ones that are like up here. I really like those earrings, but I hear they're a pain to heal. I hear they're absolutely terrible to heal. So I don't know if I ever want to get one. Because, like, I have two. I mean, I have two on both ears. I kind of want to get a like, third one on the earlobe as well. To just, you know, have, like, a three in a row. But I also think cartilage earrings look kind of nice. But I don't want to end up not having it heal properly. Welcome, your grace, and the traveler. Would you like three orders of today's welfare meal? Unfortunately, we weren't informed of your visit in advance, so we didn't prepare any super deluxe welfare meals today. I'll pass on the food then. What about you? Uh, super deluxe or bust? Then Paimon will also pass. Paimon will save her stomach for something better. Hmm, what a pity. It would seem that none of us can properly appreciate your skills, Walsey. <laughs> then, I must beg your grace to find me some more ingredients, so I can come up with some more welfare meal recipes. If you're not in the mood to eat, I can get you some drinks. We just got some great shipments in from above. Ooh. Yes, please? Huh. Paimon didn't know you could get non-welfare stuff at this place. <laughs> it's not for everyone. Think of it as a special treat for VIPs. Oh, now that's what Paima likes to hear. In that case, two bottles of the drink for Paimon, please. Mm. Two bottles coming right up. Two bottles. I'll be popping bottles. You have one? It was painful. Yeah, I don't... I think that's also another thing I'm afraid with piercings. I'm not afraid of, like, needles or anything. But, like, I do get afraid of, like, the pain sometimes when they first get pierced. I know it's, like, quick, but, like, I don't know. Do I want to experience that pain and then also the pain of the healing process as well? Don't know. Our first meeting took place on short notice and we were both swamped by everything that happened after. So there was no time for more casual chit chat. I'm actually quite fond of stories, you know. Of course, the others have already told me a lot about your deeds in Fontaine, but I'd love to hear it straight from the source. Oh, that'd be quite the long story. Um, let's see. To be honest, I wasn't really all that involved. <laughs> That's a bit too humble for you. No, I really wasn't. <laughs> Farina did all the work. Even the most unintentional action can catalyze new developments and force many fates onto brand new paths. Uh, Pima gets the sense that you're trying to flatter us. That guy we talked to earlier was obviously trying to get us to put in a good word for him, but you're the duke, right? Why would you need to get on our good side? Well, after all, you did help the fortress and I maintain our autonomy. Is it so strange that I would want to give a few words of praise out of genuine admiration? Hmm, I guess not. 
Hmm. Uh, it's just it's because you don't ever talk about yourself. That's true. <laughs> so this is a matter of trust, which is unfortunate, since I don't have nearly as interesting of a story to offer about myself. I was convicted and sent here at an early age. I only became the top dog after spending a long time figuring out its inner workings. Power and control come in many forms. Some fair and ethical, others less so. Mm. And since we're all sinners here, the victor calls the shots, no matter how they manage to get to the top. So, what do you think? Didn't put you much more at ease, now did it? Um, I'm more curious, uh, for sure. Kinda. You're really different from most of the people we've met so far. <laughs> I'm perfectly aware of that, too. But even so, that doesn't make me think any less of you. I would very much like to maintain friendly relations with you two. Sure. That's how I feel, too. What was that? Your oh. Grace, after following your instructions, we were able to find a box of undeclared contraband in the latest shipment of cargo. They were extremely well hidden, and we've confirmed that the senders have been using this method to smuggle goods for a while. We're trying to trace the goods to their source. Got it. Leave the box here and contact me immediately if you make any progress. You're dismissed. Yes, Your Grace. Sorry, I had almost completely forgotten about this. She mentioned something about contraband. Are they like dangerous goods? It's drugs. Drugs, bombs, guns, b bombs, more bombs. Not necessarily. The term is just applied to things people want to bring in on the sly. Many people here are experts at pulling rabbits out of the most ordinary hats. So we have to examine everything carefully. That reminds me of like those videos of people of like, well, I think they're like TSA agents, like opening up the most random packages and then them finding a whole like bag of cocaine inside of them. It's so like, I understand that it's cocaine and you know, it's probably part of like some sort of cartel. It's not really a good thing, but it's interesting to see those videos to see like how they hide stuff inside them. Now, what do we have here? Hmm, it's more or less what I expected. Whoa, this is certainly a box of curiosities. Mora, snacks, yarn, balls, ropes, mechanical parts, and even a gem. Wait, if you've confiscated this entire box, then does that mean all of this belongs to you now? Mm, yep. We can't just send them back up now, can we? No, the yarn ball. Someone was, someone was knitting here. What about you, Paimon? Paimon will be your vault keeper. Okay. Jokes aside, I didn't know you'd be so interested in this box. How about this then? You can pick anything you want from it. Consider it a gift from me. Said so vault keeper. Yeah, you and what skills to to keep the vault? You and what defensive skills? Really? You'll let Paimon pick anything? No take backs. Paimon will have you know that she's got a real good eye for treasure. I never joke about things like this. All right, Paimon's gonna have a look. Uh, Paimon wants this one. This dark, sparkly gem. You just know it must be worth a ton of Mora. The hell is that? Um, uh, uh, uh oh. Paimon? Actually, never mind. Paimon doesn't want this gem anymore. Can Paimon pick something else instead? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, Paimon? This gem. Paima remembered a lot of bad things when she picked it up. Bad things like what? Paimon couldn't even tune them out. It's as if the gem was just drawing them out of Paimon's brain. It was super spooky. Drawing a, a bad memories of what, though? Hmm. Is that so? Let me give it a try. <laughs> Um, Paimon's right. I do experience some unpleasant flashbacks. What if I touch it? Let me try. <laughs> Are you sure? I wouldn't exactly call it fun. Uh, my constitution is a bit different from everyone else. He said I'm different. <laughs> he said I'm built different. Fair enough. Go ahead. I don't think it'll have a permanent effect.
Ah, I see. That makes sense. He would he would dream about that. Are you okay, Traveler? You also saw something, right? Yeah, it's just as you said. I relieve some rather unforgettable memories. I'll take this gem then and run a thorough investigation on its properties. Paimon, feel free to pick something else. Then actually never mind. Paimon's gonna pass. Paimon was thinking about one of the snacks, but who knows if it'll also make Paimon sick. I wonder what she was thinking of then. Cause if it brought out bad memories from from like what they experienced in the past, I wonder what she ended up seeing. Hmm. It could be anything. It could be it could be like of her drowning. It could be of her like almost drowning before the traveler found her. Or when the traveler accidentally left her alone for like a day or so. Or maybe before then. I don't I don't know. Hmm. Doesn't hurt to be careful. You do have a point. In that case, we should destroy the entire box and all of its contents. Seems like we're almost done with our drinks too. Let's go check out the society's gathering place then. I can introduce you and we can also continue our conversation while we're at it. Wait, are you this free every day or something? Just noticed? I wasn't exactly busy the first time we met either. <laughs> hard worker. The definition of a quote unquote hard worker. Most busy CEO. We are honored by your visit, Your Grace. All of us at the Society have been waiting for your arrival. Beret Society. Are these your two guests? Mm-hmm. Let me introduce you to them. Traveler, this is Dugier, the head of the Beret Society. This is their gathering place. Members can find all sorts of drinks and snacks here, as well as a large variety of books and other resources. Mm. Every once in a while, the Society will also host activities and seminars, which are always well attended. You flatter me, Your Grace. All we did was set up an organization in the same way as you would in the world above. It's so easy to feel lonely and helpless when you arrive here for the first time. I remember that feeling all too well. None of us knew anything about this place then, after all. <laughs> but that's when the thought <laughs> came to me. If we could help everyone turn over a new leaf, they would no longer have to lead such gloomy existences. Thus, it was with your help that I founded the Beret Society. Why does he sound really sus? He does. Okay. <laughs> he, you know what he has? Uh, get, chat, I want you to guess what he has that makes him stand out. What does he have? That most villains have. Take a guess. Take a wild guess. The mustache. The fucking mustache again. Oh, so you were also involved with this rising? Ah, uh, my part in this was minimal. All I did was follow procedure and rubber stamp the application. That damn mustache, man. I'm sure you have a very good sense of what this place is about by now. As you know, not everyone takes their sentence seriously. For some, this is just another place where they can eat, breathe, and sleep. But the society is a great place for those who wish to turn things around. Exactly right. Here, we keep an eye on each other and remind each other of our goals. Everyone can focus on rehabilitating our mental states and even make many new friends. Mm. Our operations are entirely funded by members' donated goods and credit coupons. Same for the things you can see here. Hmm. Who knew you could find such a place in the Fortress of Meripeed? Hmm. Oh, right, and what's the deal with the hats? Ah, oh, there's nothing deep about it. I just felt like we needed some kind of visible identifier. I see. If our members felt joy and pride from being a part of this group, then the hats would become a point of pride for them as well. And when we're together, we will feel a sense of community from seeing everyone's hats. Optimism, community, hard work, and a desire for a new life. I hope this hat will show everyone everything we have been working towards. 
I mean, it sounds pretty promising. It doesn't sound too bad of a society. Maybe it's not really evil. It sounds just more like a... Like group therapy or something like a rehabilitation group i guess like what are the what are they called i'm pretty sure they're called rehabilitation groups like you know those circles where they um like alcoholics and non like alcoholics anonymous or something like that in other words that hat has come to represent something like a model citizen which also helps them recruit new members it's like it's kind of like that the therapy circle? I guess so, yeah. Once again, you are exactly right, Your Grace. That's a part of our goal as well. Let's take a little old seat over here. There's no need for us to stand. I'll ask the members to get us some drinks. Please, wait here just one moment. You know, feel free to look around, too, if you want to learn more about us. Hmm, so this meeting was planned all along? Oh, right. What happened to your slow day, Risley? Huh. Seems like I shouldn't underestimate an adventurer's keen sense of observation. I'll bear that in mind the next time I need to do something low-key. Yeah. Uh, kidding, of course. We're just discussing some small matters. It shouldn't take long. We've also already gone over the organization's vision. Instead of listening to me try to explain some more, maybe it'd be better if you took a look around for yourself. Support groups? Yeah. yeah. I feel like you didn't answer the question at all. <laughs> uh, well, we're already here, aren't we? He never answers questions, ever. The dude is a professional question dodger. Might as well take a look. Yeah, they're supposed to be like the model prisoners, right? So this is what their spot looks like. Bro is a professional question dodger. Oslet. Welcome to our gathering place. Is there... Anything you'd like me to explain to you? Oh, it's okay. We're just taking a look around. You sound a bit like a Melusine guide. <laughs> what a thing to say to someone you're meeting for the first time. <laughs> you sound like a bit like a salesperson in a shop. Oh, okay. All right. Well, what about Melusine guy? It's kind of funny, I guess. Well, that's not a bad comparison. It is my job to explain our amenities and benefits to our latest members. I'm sure Mr. Dugier has already explained some of it, but allow me to fill you in some more. Besides this space, which our members use to rest and relax, we also have an entertainment room, a fitness room, and a self-study room. These rooms are open to all of our members. We want everyone to be able to use their free time to the fullest. Wow, that's pretty cool. Do you have a restaurant queue? If you did, you also wouldn't have to eat at the big cafeteria anymore. Unfortunately, we don't. For matters like that, we still have to rely on his grace. Unlucky. We started a collaboration with the cafeteria a while back, though, so they let us borrow their kitchen to do some simple research into recipes and cooking. You've really thought of everything then, huh? Yeah. Hyman can definitely see how it'd be easier to live your life if you had all this support. Bro, I guess that's a good thing about being in a part of being a part of a group compared to being alone in prison. Yep, and that's exactly why Mr. Duget founded the Society. We all think we made the correct choice to join him. Hello, Zilly. I'm doing well. How are you? Twitch, where is your notifications? Twitch hates me. I think it's also because hey, I haven't streamed there, it a little bit. Rygas. Uh, hello. Are you talking to Paimon? Yep, I'm talking to you. Now, why don't you follow my lead and take a deep breath before letting everything out like this? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> what? <is? laughs> what the? <laughs> what was that? All right, let me try. Ha! <sighs> That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty, uh that was very, that was very relieving. <laughs> I was really loud. <laughs> That's how I pump myself up every day. A lot of my friends have found it super useful too. With one shout, you can release all the fatigue, resentment, and unpleasantness from your lungs and return to the day with all the optimism in the world. I guess so. <laughs> Earphone user death sentence. <laughs> Hello, Riku God mode. Why don't you also give it a try, huh? 
I promise that it'll work. Uh, Fireman's gonna pass. <laughs> <laughs> he said, nah. Feeling shy? That's all right. He said, as nah. As long as you remember this trick, it'll come in handy one day. Just remember to take a deep breath and let it all out if you find yourself at your wit's end. Ah. <sighs> oh, wait, that was, that was, uh, that was Kalis's voice actor. He's so funny when he has a role. He's so funny to listen to. He's so good. Hey, what are you doing over here? I love when he gets roles. He's so funny to listen to. Oh, hello. You are a guest of the Duke, are you not? I'm organizing the bookshelves. Want to take a look? We've got some classics, as well as a few books that the members published themselves. There are writers in the society? Yeah. Most of them are writing diaries or autobiographies on their time in the organization. Some quit drinking. Uh, some learned to tailor. Uh, some became real good at calligraphy. And even I've learned to use a camera. Aww. <laughs> we find it kind of funny. You see, had we managed to stay above ground, none of us would have ever had the time to learn any of those skills. Ah, it's because you all have a lot more free time now. Not only that, but we've also now got the mental space to think about taking on new things. Before we came here, we were constantly exhausted just trying to live. With how the Duke and Mr. Dugier have organized our lives down here, though, <laughs> all we need to do is think about the things that we want to do. Mm. You never know what you may be good at until you give it a try. True. Very true. Did I cut my hair or are you tripping? No, I did cut my hair. I cut my hair a month ago to regrow it all out. I'm like... Yeah. My hair is short right now. I'm gonna grow it out though, don't worry. And while you're here, no matter what you do, you won't get judged for it. After all, there's no need to conform to societal expectations when you're already in jail. So this is something like a safe space. True. Yeah, that's exactly right. After all, not everyone is good at fighting or have the physical strength to do hard labor. The society is exactly what some of us need. And that's it. I just finished organizing this shelf as well, so feel free to check it out if you want. Just remember to put the books back after you're done. Don't worry, we will. All right, we've talked to everybody. It sure sounds like they're all pretty happy. That would explain why Risley only had good things to say about this place. Huh. It looks like they're starting to wrap up their conversation as well. Let's go over to them. You sh- I- I shaved and you included my mustache in your birthday art? That's fine. It's alright. It'll be immortalized in the arc. My mustache will be immortalized in the art. A reminder of what I used to look like. I'll probably grow it out again one day. If I'm like feeling lazy and I don't want to shave all the time again. Maybe- maybe another time as well. Don't worry. Beard will be missed. It's alright. It'll come back one day. Of course, your grace. I will attend to those matters right away. Okay, then I don't have anything else to add. Oh, you're back. What did you think about this place? Now, note that your opinion will also affect my review of Dugier and the society as a whole. Oh, wait. I didn't know they were also a part of the evaluation process. Uh, it's all right with me, though. I'm pretty confident about our growth and activities. Pyman thinks it's pretty good. Don't think anyone expected you to get a society going here of all places. Seems all right on the surface. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. By themselves, our resources probably don't feel like much. The prisoners here all have very different personalities and psychological needs. Our needs are like violent beasts. If we can't face them properly, they'll grow restless and enraged, causing pain and conflict. But if we can placate them, they lose their fangs. And they can even be converted into fuel for far nobler pursuits. Which is why, in my opinion, learning to reconcile with oneself is the first step on the path to redemption. Spoken like a true therapist. You've hit the nail on the head, your grace. Before I founded the society, I had met too many people who could not come to terms with themselves. Mm. Is he southern? He does have a southern accent. And I'm sure that a part of your support is rooted in your desire to help those people find their way. And Paimon thought everyone was enjoying life just fine, working and fighting. Of course, that lifestyle is more than enough for some people in the fortress. For others, though, 
they would just be useless distractions. Speaking of fighting, I'm not sure if you knew this, but even his grace sometimes fights in the ring. Yeah. What? You fight in the ring too? Wearing those high-tech boxing gloves of yours? Oh, I almost never need them. Uh, almost never, you say? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he getting so scared? <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it's, it's like some people just like shiver at the thought of him. Hey, isn't that the guy who lost his hat? Did you come here to relax too? <laughs> What's wrong? Did you forget about us already? Are you feeling all right? You are looking a little pale. No, I'm fine. Thank you for helping me get my hat back. I'm sorry, but I've got to go. He's still as weird as before. Mm, Pyron's kind of used to it by now, though. Hmm, there's something sus about him. Dugier, do you know what's up with him? Hmm, I'm also not too sure about that, as far as I recall. He's always been a little strange, but I'll check up on him later. After all, it's my responsibility as the leader to make sure that no one falls through the cracks. We'll leave him to you then. Hmm. Where were we before we got sidetracked? Something about boxing gloves. Oh, right. About that. You might have thought that I was joking, but in a place like that, everyone will use everything in their power to win. And when emotions run high, things often spiral out of control. That would be when I need to pull out my gloves to maintain order. Sometimes you might need more than just gloves as well. This pair of handcuffs has also come in handy quite a number of times. Huh? Which ones? Those? Oops. Oh. Oops. Oh. Oh, isn't that that awful gem? You're still carrying it with you? Yeah, I kept it on me because of its special qualities. It won't affect me as long as I don't let it come into contact with my skin. Go on, you guys. Pick up the item for his grace, would you? Y yes, right, right away. Huh? That gym shines with quite the dazzling light. I hope it hasn't been damaged. Your grace, please let me know if there's something wrong with it now. Hmm. It still looks good to me. Say, Dugier, have you ever seen a gem like this? Never, your grace. Don't think I've ever been rich enough to afford this kind of a thing. Yeah. No, he knows what he's doing. I, that definitely was a little bit planned to just drop it on the floor. He said that so casually. He was like, oops. <laughs> oops. I dropped my very shiny crystal rock. Oops. Will someone pick it up for me? Oh, my back. I can't reach it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's fair. We've already gone over most of the things that I wanted to talk about, so let's wrap up for the day. The Traveler also has some other plans, after all. Uh... Mm. Got it, Your Grace. Take care, everyone. I'll take you to the exit. Traveler, Paimon, it was an honor. I'm sure everyone would love it if you were to visit again. And that goes for you as well, Your Grace. We wish you all the best in your endeavors. Hmm. And same to you. Okay. Oh no, I dropped my uh, 30 crit I value artifact. If you didn't plans for the rest of the day, <laughs> why did you lie to him? Well, what's your opinion of the society now that you've taken a look around their headquarters? Uh, Paimon thinks it's pretty chill. Aren't you complimenting them the entire time as well? Paimon doesn't remember exactly what you said, but wasn't it something along the lines of encouraging people to embrace their new lives with optimism? There's only one potential problem. If the society does too good a job managing and rehabilitating its members, you may be soon out of a job. <laughs> that is certainly a possibility. But at this point in time, they're still reducing my workload by managing and rehabilitating prisoners in my stead. Yeah, that's not a bad thing, honestly. I wanted to see just how much they've managed to accomplish, and also get a sense of Dugier's plans for the future. I arranged for a meeting out of curiosity, but then I noticed some faint hints of dissonance. Dissonance? I'm sure the Traveler has sensed it too. Mmm, there's something off about that place? 
it is a it does feel a bit cultish i feel like the hats give off a culty vibes for sure the hats give off a cultish vibe because normally groups like that they don't really have like an indicate like usually they would have like pins maybe to like indicate that you that you know that you've made progress but like normally i don't think they don't really have hats you know i don't know it's it's a little weird as expected you also picked up on it the whole truth is a bit complicated so i'll explain everything to you later i can tell you right now though that this was an unexpected turn of events i had hoped to take care of it in secret but now a confrontation may no longer be avoidable it's hard to predict what might happen next hey you've completely lost my mind that also makes me wonder, why did that one Beret Society member- Why was that one Beret Society member hiding in a box? While he also lost his hat. Why don't you take this opportunity to check back on the gathering place? Just tell them you left something of yours there by accident. If my hypothesis is correct, Dugier should already have left. And with his watchful eye removed, you may well get a very different reception from the members. To expect? I'm just following the most popular playbook in Fontaine. Investigate, obtain evidence, and then use the truth to render judgment. It's been so long since I got to watch a performance at Opera Epicles that I've even begun to miss it. Hmm. I'll trust you for now. I like your videos. You love my appearance on the scamly vlogs. You write in English like a giraffe, and your English has improved a lot after you started consuming content in English. Hugs from Brazil. Thank you, EU Orni. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I'll trust you for now. I'll explain everything to you later. But right now, we need to seize this opportunity. Find out what you can from them now while they're all in one place. We might not get another chance like this anytime soon. Also, hello, EMRTB. Then, what are you gonna do? Good question. What should I do? Hmm. Maybe I'll drop by the ring and sign myself up for a fight. Hey, so you're really just gonna make us work while you slack off? Uh, uh huh. That's a yes, I guess. He doesn't even answer. I'll take that as a yes. Professional question dodger, Risley. Classic. <laughs> Risley said. Seems like Dugier is no longer here. You said you felt there was something off about this place, right? So let's see if we can feel something out. Paimon will do her best to help. Hmm. Let's see if we can strike up a conversation. That guy's that guy's muscles are huge. You guys are Jesus Christ, his arms are huge. Fuck. Thing, and we figured we might have left it here by accident. We'll be on our way as soon as we find it. Like me? Okay, Dealski. <laughs> like mine? Ah, uh, Ito could never. True. Oh, okay. Did anyone see a glass bottle by any chance? Um. <sighs> what? What's going on? Nobody. Uh, it was about the size of my hand. I was using it to store some spice powder. <laughs> it's okay. There's no need to be nervous. It's not like we lost a whole bag of mora or anything. We'll just look for it ourselves if none of you caught a glimpse of it. We're not gonna tell Risley anything, don't worry. I- I'll go find Mr. Duchier. No need. We're just looking for something. Why does he have to know? Uh... Mm. It feels like they're all terrified of something. We can look around for it, yeah? Uh... Yeah, okay, now something's really off. Now they're showing it. It's like without Mr. Dugier, they don't know what to do. Hmm. Hmm. 
Are you still organizing the bookshelves? Um... Yeah, and... I'm sorry. Uh, but you can't check out the books right now. We weren't thinking about that to begin with, but weren't you super friendly just a moment ago? Sorry. Hmm. If I examine the books. You really can't check them out. Please understand. Hmm. Am I jealous of an NPC's arm? Yeah, if I could have arms as big, I feel like it'd be a life would be a lot easier. Like, look at this guy's arms. They're almost as wide as his head. That's like half of his head. Look at that. That man's arms is huge. Hey, hello? Anyone home? Hello? How can I help you? Can you give us that rundown again? The Beret Society offers a variety of resources and benefits to its members and... Uh, I, I mean, you've already heard my spiel. I don't know anything beyond what I've already told you. Mm. You don't know anything? Uh, sorry, that's not what I meant. It's just... There's nothing more I can tell you. Okay, Paimon sees what you meant now. Mm. Seems like they really don't want to talk to us, so let's just head back. I want to talk to... I wanted to talk to Rigus. Please. Please just leave me alone. What about Rigus? Hey, big guy! W what do you want? Isn't this how you greeted us earlier? Take a deep breath and let it all out. Oh, yeah, that's right. You, you sure are a fast learner. Where'd your optimism go? Uh, I... I ate something earlier, so I'm... falling into a bit of a food coma, and, uh... <laughs> I mean, not everyone can be super upbeat all the time. Dang, right? just like me. He's just like me. You're looking for something, you said? I, I didn't see it, but uh, it should be somewhere nearby. Hmm. I didn't see it. Why don't you try to look for it somewhere else? All right. Uh. Food coma hits hard for real. It always happens at like 4 p.m. too. Good to know I'm also jealous of your big and beefy arms. You can barely do 30 push-ups. <laughs> 30 push-ups is actually a lot to do in a row. I feel. You uh, have arms that big? How big and strong. Big strong girlfriend. It was as if they had all turned into completely different people. They were all acting super scared. Hmm. That would prove my suspicions. The dissonance I mentioned earlier was precisely that fleeting moment of fear behind the cheerful facade. Like that one guy we found hiding in the box. Right. He was acting super scared too when we saw him at the gathering place. Hmm. Actually, hasn't he just been acting super paranoid since we first met? And that's precisely why I took his hat. Oh, so the one who started it all was... You. It was <laughs> it's because I wanted to figure out what's really going on. I don't believe any of Dugier's talk about unstable mental states. How long have you been investigating this? Not too long. Dugier made very elaborate preparations for my visit. But I don't know. It almost feels like the performance was too elaborate. Okay, but if you think something's wrong, why don't you just take the whole society into custody? Aren't you the Duke? <laughs> True. I mean, if he was a dictator, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you're actually a better fit for the position than I am. Just give me the word and I'll hand you the cuffs. Ooh. In all seriousness, however, cuffs and the like should be used sparingly. They're mostly for show. Everything I do is on display. The way people see me act determines the kind of world I can create down here. And I've always striven to appear fair and reasonable to the people. Uh, that sounds a bit deep. I was not sure she got all of it. <laughs> the Duke's actions will set the tone. Yeah, basically. If he acts like a dictator, then the place would be a lot more... Just not as friendly. Yeah, you've hit the nail on the head. 
I have to lead by example if I want to maintain expectations of justice and order. And that's why even though Dugier had already let a few things slip, I didn't want to turn on him without irrefutable evidence. All right, so you're saying Dugier has figured out some way to control the members of his society, and even though the members are acting all optimistic and motivated, it's all just a show. We're missing something still. Indeed. He certainly seems to be using some coercive methods to turn his members into the most upbeat and motivated group of people you've ever seen. And that won't turn out well in the long run. It's The Rock. It's The Rock. Because as soon as they saw The Rock, they all freaked out. As soon as they saw the stone fall on the ground, they all freaked out. So what I think is that he uses The Rocks against them to make them do whatever he wants. Possibly. I have some faith, though, that some of the members understood the hint I gave during our visit. The line has been set, and it's quite likely that a fish will bite. Fish? Let's give them some time. My guards will need it to finish their investigation, too. Fish? <laughs> you can find me in my office when the time comes. Hey! Don't just leave before you've explained everything to Paimon! Hey! Classic. Classic Risley. Professional question dodger. The Proud Beret Society. Which time do I have to wait? Wait till six. I wonder if Risley wants a dog. Risley's probably wrapped up his investigation. Paimon has no idea what that guy's thinking. Let's just go find him and ask him what he's really up to. I wonder if dogs can live underground for their life without any like, oh God, why does this story quest? Dude, really? Man. Sack. Ah. Uh. Don't you love it when you run in, accidentally run into a story quest and then you can't exit out of it? I don't know why they still have that. Come on, man. Oh, do you guys like the poster in the back? Thinking of hanging this up. A JJK poster. Put it like. I was thinking. Less than I could put it like here. You can't see it on camera, but. You like Gojo. <laughs> I look so tiny. Well, I am. I don't look so bald anymore? Yeah, because my hair's growing out. God damn it, it's still... It's still stuck inside of the story quest, dude. What the fuck? Ugh. I'm sorry. I'm, skip I'm skipping this. I'm sorry. The world quest that I do after this is gonna be... Sorry. Sorry. I don't want- I didn't want to have to skip this, but... And I'm doing something else now. Don't care. That's so annoying that they have you do that. Like, why do they allow- Why do they allow that to happen while you're doing a quest? 
they should give you a prompt. If you run into something, if you run into a different like world quest or story quest, they should give you a prompt asking you if you want to switch to another to the other one. It's kind of it's kind of weird that they don't have that. And it's weird that they don't even allow you to go back sometimes. Like sometimes you're able to to like quit out of the game and log back in and you'll be at a different location so it doesn't start the dialogue again, but other times it'll just keep you in the same spot and you can't do anything about it. Weird. Oh, here you are. Did you manage to land a lucky pole on the welfare meals tonight? No. Let's just get straight to the point. Has anything else happened with this <laughs> She's like, no, stop. <laughs> Answer my questions. Patience, Paimon. Even as the situation continues to brew, we still need to make sense of what we learned so far and go over any sticking points. I'm actually still thinking about the first thing that came to my mind when I noticed something amiss. Namely, why didn't anyone come to me about it? Oh, that's a good point. Could whatever they're afraid of be so powerful that even you won't be able to do anything about it? But even if such a thing existed, how could they be so sure without checking with me first? It'd be one thing if it was just one or two people, but it seems like everyone's convinced that I won't be able to help. Which leads me to believe that it's more likely that they think I just wouldn't care to help them. Hmm. Because you instigated Dojier in the first place? Yes, something like that. Dojier must have told them something to make them think I won't take their side. So it became imperative for me to refute that and prove my true stance. Of course, I had originally planned to do this in a more covert way, but I had to improvise when you identified the guy who'd lost his hat with everyone present. There was no way to keep our investigation a secret after that. That makes sense. Uh, wait, but does that mean it was all Paimon's fault? <laughs> now that you mention it. The last thing that guy wanted was for Dugier to find out that he'd lost it. He would have never brought the matter up on his own. But now... Not only has Dugier found out that he'd lost his hat, he's also realized that we were the ones who found it. That likely set his internal alarms off all at once. Mmm, the hats must be hiding something. <gasps> Wait. I think I might know what the hats might be hiding. Yes, that's the conclusion I came to as well. It's the only thing that could explain the fear. If we didn't act right then and there, Dujier I'm not gonna guess. I'm not gonna guess. With some other way to hide the truth, and we'd be back to square one. I, I won't guess. I won't guess. I'll, I'll leave it as a mystery. Cause I, I, I feel like I know, but I'm not. I'm just gonna. I'll, I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it. I'll just... So after giving the matter some thought, I tossed that black gem onto the ground. I must say, I was pretty satisfied with the results. Ah, so you did that on purpose? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Of course, that box was discovered as part of our investigation of the society from the very beginning. I had no way to know if any of the members had actually seen the gem before, but since I had to do something, I decided to gamble. So that's the hint you were talking about earlier. Right. And I said back there that I had no idea what the gem represented. That should have been enough to let people know that it's still early days for my investigation. And since I was traveling with you, heroes who have never turned a blind eye to evil and injustice, they would also understand that we're here to help, rather than to tolerate or uphold the status quo. Hmm. You used us as a part of your plan too! So that's why you wanted us to come along. Very sneaky. My apologies. There was no time and quite a lot to explain, so I figured it might be easier to just let you see a few things for yourselves. But I can assure you that I've now told you everything there is to know. Of course, you're under no obligation, but I would really appreciate it if you could continue to lend me your support and help me figure out the true secret behind the society. Would you be willing to lend me your support? Okay. Uh, but Paimon's still mad at you! Mmm, sure. If all you need is some help planning. You have my thanks. Now, there are still two outstanding matters in our investigation. The first is the secret of the hats. I've examined one before. There was nothing suspicious about the item itself. Mm -hmm. The other is the true purpose of the black gem. We haven't been able to get anything out of anyone with actual knowledge of it. It's my hope that a brave fish will take my bait and venture outside of their dark and murky pool. 
I'll put some music on while we wait. What is he gonna play? Skibbity toilet music? Oh no. It's classical or something. Hmm. Hmm, fine choice, sir. I say, this is, this is quite a delectable experience. been following me. Uh-oh. Please, do. I apologize for my lack of composure. These two are the guests that came with you to our gathering place, correct? You know us? Yes, my lover Fasol told me all about you. Please, help us, Your Grace. He's in great danger right now. Slow down, take a deep breath, and start from the top. What happened at the Society? I'm sorry, Your Grace. I will try. I think I should start from when you saw Fasol last. You mean, when we saw him at the gathering place? Yes, he fled immediately. But many members are hot on his heels. Thankfully, he still managed to meet up with me and explain everything that had happened. Now that he's lost Dugier's trust, what awaits him is agonizing censure. Censure? Censure. Censure is Dugier's method of establishing control, as well as the thing we all fear the most. Mm, Rather I than see. listening to me explain what it is, Your Grace, please, just let me show it to you. Every secret may be found within... Aha! A what? Ah, uh... uh, here you are! I was wondering where you had run off to in such a hurry. I told you, it's the mustache! It's the fucking mustache, man! It's always the people with the mustaches! Please excuse us, your grace. It was never our intention to disturb you like this. You see, Avisa's mental state has been rather unstable ever since she arrived at the fortress. She rambles often, has hallucinations. It may be best to dismiss her babbling as random gibberish. <laughs> I don't recall hearing a knock or giving permission for you to come in. Oh, my apologies. I merely did not wish for your grace to be alarmed. Had I not been so focused on recovering her, I would have followed all the rules of etiquette to the letter. So please forgive my discourtesy. <laughs> like we believe you. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> indeed, like we'd believe you. Please, there's no need to be upset. It's only natural to want to side with the poor sick girl, but I know his grace to be a reasonable man. Uh-huh, yeah, I'm sure she's sick. Mm -hmm. He's gaslighting hard as fuck? Yeah, he is. Well then, what if the reasonable man wants to hear the lunatic out? That would be perfectly fine with me. Oh, and just so you know, we've also found the missing Mr. Fasal. I had no idea why he was so upset about losing his hat, really. Thankfully, he has already returned to his senses. We've brought him back to our place, so there's no need to worry. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, Your Grace. I don't have anything more to say. Mm. This is what you're afraid of, correct? You can tell me everything. I'll do all I can for you. I... I... Uh, I've never seen that thing in my life. You can do it, Avis. Your Grace, I don't think there's anything else she would like to say. Pressuring her will not get you anywhere. He's kind of right, though, because she... He ha they have her lover in their possession right now. There's nothing she could do unless... Unless she's willing to sacrifice him. Mm. It's all right, Avis. As long as you tell me what it is that you're terrified of, no matter what it is, it will no longer be able to hurt you. I swear this on my name and honor as the Duke. Your Grace! <sighs> Forget it. I'll keep my mouth shut. I've already said everything I could say about the matter. I'm sorry, Your Grace, but I really don't have anything more to say. Please, 
Don't press me further. Yeah, there's nothing you can do because she doesn't want to hurt. She doesn't want harm to come to her lover's way. But why? In that case, Avis and I will be off. Once again, please accept my apologies for disturbing your peaceful evening, Your Grace. Miss Avis, please show me your head. That is an order. Look at the top of her head. There's nothing there. Your Grace, I know you have long tired of my words, but please believe me when I say you've merely let your worries get to your head. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be inside the hat. It had to have been inside of the hat. The society has never caused trouble for you or any of the guards at the fortress. We've spent all of our time working hard and trying to lead better lives. Why are you doing everything in your power to prove our guilt? What's wrong with the current state of affairs? I'll do anything for you, as long as you give me the word. Why are you so intent on getting rid of someone who's been unfalteringly loyal? Your words bore me. You know the consequences if I find you to be lying. Everything that I do, I do for the Fortress of Meripede. But your grace is welcome to visit us any time to confirm the true intent of our activities. Mm. All right, Avis. Let's head back. Also, isn't this theme, um, the one they use? Isn't this the same thing they use, uh, during, what was it? Uh, the meeting with Arlecano? Is this a, is this a Fatui theme? Does this mean that, uh, oh, it's a trial one? Oh, I think, I thought this was the, uh, the Fatui one. I think it's different, though. We should have shown him his place. My bad. Sooner or later, all will pay the price for their arrogance. Because I recognized it, but... Oh, he must have been well prepared for this exact scenario, or he wouldn't have dared to be so openly hostile. All the more reason for us to be patient. The entire society are his hostages. His subordinates would definitely react if he were taken into custody. And that's why he dared to bare his fangs right in front of me. Mm. So now our biggest problem is... The true secret of the society is neither on the hat nor on the members' heads. Dugier probably knew this from the very beginning, which is why he didn't panic. However, if we were to look at the rules, it would also seem like the head has to be the place where they're keeping all of their secrets. Yeah, none of this makes sense to Paimon either. What are they trying to hide? Oh, I have to think? Oh, I gotta think, okay. Where did Avis hide the secret? The hats are definitely being used to hide a secret. But there's nothing wrong with the hats themselves. Hmm. But if there's nothing on her head, why did Avis feel the need to remove her hat? Mm -hmm. From the way Dugier acted, he must have known from the beginning that we wouldn't be able to find any evidence. an idea but a lost hair clip what a coincidence so do i uh -huh. what is it tell my mom about it avis didn't take off her hat to draw attention to her head she did so to remove her hair clip you mean this thing oh she did leave that so she handed a key piece of evidence over to us without dugier noticing that would mean that avis didn't stay silent out of fear she stayed silent because she'd already given us what we needed. Let me take a look. He tinkers with the hair clip for a brief moment. I managed to remove this from the hair clip. It's long, slender, and conical. It's hollow on the inside and looks something like a cross between a nail and a thorn. Hmm. Uh, Paimon's last again. Let's see. What if we do this? Hey, what are you doing? Uh, wait, some kind of dark liquid is leaking out of the gem. 
Oh, hmm. And some of it has been absorbed by this thorny looking thing. Hmm. The gem is used as a container for a type of liquid. You've probably heard before that water is filled with the strongest emotions of humanity. With that in mind, this liquid is probably a highly concentrated solution of fear. Hmm. So, it's literally liquid fear. Oh, so that's why even touching it will make you remember unpleasant things. So, with this infused thorn... So what? If they act- if they act out of disobedience, they like prick them? They prick them and then trigger fear emotions to keep them obedient? Huh. Dujier would be able to censure others. I can only imagine how it would feel to have this directly injected into your brain. Oh. The moment it hits you would be like being flooded with all the terrors you've ever experienced in your life. Agony, desolation, and an overwhelming sense of despair. No wonder they're all so terrified of it. So, was the hat meant to cover up their wounds? And that might not even be all. Let's go get them right away. We can't let Dujier escape with all of the evidence. Mm. Lobotomy tease? You were doing that today? What? <laughs> um. <laughs> lobotomy. You just got done with the lobotomy session? Oh, practice and med- You do- You practice lobotomies in med school? I thought that was like a- Was like a- Frowned upon practice. Is it not? Huh. Oh, like brain no poking? Brace. Okay, no, that makes more sense. Society members into custody. They all tried to flee just a little while ago, as if they had received some kind of order. We decided to forestall their plan, and were just about to send the word when you unexpectedly arrived. Great work, everyone. Hmm. You had prepared for something like this all along? I had them stay here to keep an eye on things, so I'm glad that my intuition turned out to be correct. Perform a thorough search of the Society's headquarters and bring all the members to me. Understood, Your Grace. Hmm. Now, let's check on them. As expected, they all have a hollow thorn inserted into a wound on their head. Ow. Ooh. Wait, they actually do just get like a lobotomy every single time they act out of disobedience. What the hell? Paimon's glad her eyesight isn't so good that she can see it from here. I... Paimon's gonna float away for a bit. They didn't pull the thorn out. They probably left it there as a lasting reminder of Dujier's censure. These people must have had to endure an unimaginable amount of pain. Well, that's actually Let's go terrible. Check out the other areas too. This is an actual like fucked up cult. What the hell? This is like worse than I thought it would be. These papers are actually outdated, but they look brand new. It seems no one has ever flipped through them. If you look closely, even the creases are almost identical. They don't seem to have been formed naturally through reading. Hey, come here! Have a look at this! Oh, uh, nope. I'm talking to Risley first. Look at what I found. What was that? This is- oh, it's a button in the back. This is a surveillance port. With this, Dujier would be able to remotely monitor everything that's happening at the gathering place. So even if Dujier's not there in person, he'll still always have eyes on the members. That explains why they're all so terrified. Indeed. It's easy to become lost and confused when you're given no instructions or any kind of script to follow. And if any action you take may be deemed a mistake, then perhaps it's better to do less. Or to not do anything at all. Dujier has already tamed them to his will. Hmm. Hmm. Now what you want, Paimon? This is a book that Paimon found in a box next to the bookshelf. Its contents are exactly the same as this book on the shelf. The colors of the covers are...
they're completely different, though. And the names of the authors also don't match up. So these were also just for show. To make it look like the bookshelves being added to and maintained. Yeah! And they dared to claim that they wrote these, too. Huh! Hmm. Your Grace! Your Grace! What's the matter? We couldn't find any society members in the other areas. It also seems like none of the equipment in those rooms were ever used. All the signs of wear and tear are fake. The lime scale, the layers of dust, they were all deliberately added. And where the hell are they at? We also investigated the members' residences and weren't able to find anything. Their neighbors all say that they haven't returned home for ages. What? Oh. Is that right? They're gone? That could only mean... The society put a lot of effort into building a front. The royal headquarters are elsewhere. Indeed. As long as he allowed society members to mingle with others, even with threats of censure, Dujier knew that he couldn't stop all of his members from speaking out. Meanwhile, this marvelous gathering place will lose all of its value as soon as a whistleblower sounds the alarm. So instead of being his real base, this is just an elaborate performance. The rest areas, the fancy equipment, even the members that we saw. They were merely part of the front. And only the most docile and well-trained members were selected as his performers. True. But then, where can we actually find him? <sighs> Let me think. Dugier must be holding all the rest of his members in another place. And if the overseer of my fortress guard has never alerted me to anything of the sort, he must be in Dugier's pocket. Hmm. He could tell us where the real headquarters are then. I'm of the same mind. Let's go. You two, follow me. Where did they get dust? <laughs> I don't know. They just be coming up with anything. If they can... If liquidized fear is a thing in Tevat, they could probably come up with dust. Very easily. <laughs> I have a feeling... I have a feeling... Dust is probably easy to create for them. But yeah, this cold is actually a little bit more messed up than I thought it was gonna be. You know, it kind of gives me, it kind of gives me like, it kind of gives me bad memories. Not, well, not really like bad memories, but like it, it gives me like, it reminds me of like, um, when I was reading about. Okay, hold on, I'll, I'll save it for later. That's the most likely scenario to me. He's probably already caught wind of Dugier's declaration of war against me, and has fled to seek his protection. Let's keep heading down. There are some abandoned areas in there. Since he needs space, I'd guess Dugier probably converted them into his headquarters. Mm. We should be on the right track. Now we just need to find that turncoat. Let's go. We can take this path. You guys take the other. It reminds me of, um, it reminds me of, uh, like when I was reading about like the, the Jeffrey Dahmer stuff, I remember of the time where he was like, he, when he had a, when he had a child, when he abducted a child and, and he used to like, uh, drill, he had to, he ended up drilling a hole in their head. Like, basically giving them a lobotomy to make sure they won't run. It kind of reminds me of that. Look at this dude running. Ugh, those blasted guards! Wait, what? Yeah, okay. Forget about that for now. Did Dugier send you? Why did you attack that guard? <sighs> Come on! It's time to talk! Can't you see that he's trying to help? I will take your cooperation into consideration when it comes time to hand out sentences. 
but Mr. Dugier, he, he didn't want this guy to expose our true location. We were just about to dispose of him when you caught up to us. So, in other words, your headquarters should be this way. Yes, it's just down this way. You'll make it there once you've seen it pass through a large drainage pipe. Now that's more like it. Forget it. Okay, I'll explain it after. Hold on. Just give me a sec. Guards, take them away. Let's go. It's about time that we find out what Dugier's really after. Like, I was saying that, like, the, the lobotomy that they were performing on the, uh, the cult members' heads, it reminded me of, um, of, like, what Jeffrey Dahmer used to do for some of his victims. Like, he would drill a hole into their head to make sure they won't escape when he had them in captivity. So... I was just saying that's what it reminded me of. And like how fucked up it was. And put chemicals into them? Yeah. Mature tag? I think... I'm pretty sure I already have a mature warning on it because of the uh, profanity. I think, right? Yeah, I can't put anything else on it. Intended for certain audiences? Yeah. Yeah, that it reminded me of that. It reminded me of that. It was pretty fucked up. There's so much space down here. Yeah. These are all former work areas. They've been left abandoned due to a lack of funds. There are usually guards on patrol here. It would seem that all of those guards have been bought as well. Mm. Stay sharp. He's got a ton of surprises waiting for us, I'm sure. It's time to beat up some guards, I guess. <laughs> Anything can be bought for the right price. Including loyalty. Risely gameplay? What about my Risely? Okay, let, let's see the difference. They have 2,000 attack on theirs. Oh, they have the, uh, they have his signature. That's why. But they have no bless on him! Meanwhile, I have his actual artifact set. They have 79, 130. What do I have? 53, 215. Alright, you win. You win, however. Screw you. You won with that one. You win. Surrender and I'll be gentle. Oh, I'm so sorry. Away now. Ow. I have a good build. It's decent. I wish I had his signature though. This could get a little chilly. Hey, are you okay? You're safe now. Just follow the guards and leave this place. Who knew that there'd be Gardamax here? Dugier really prepared for everything. And that would explain the strange decommission requests I received, as well as account for all the Gardamex that had mysteriously gone missing. Seems like he's prepared for an all-out confrontation with me. Hey, what's this? 
Or console app for Amber? Seems like some kind of handbook. Let me see. I think I think she's at C4 or C5 right now. Ah, this should be the society's real rules book. It lists all the rules that they're expected to follow. Members are not permitted to speak to each other or to leave without formal permission. Five members shall form a group, and the whole group will be punished for any single member's wrongdoings. Damn. Anyone who reports a fellow member's misbehavior shall be rewarded with food and water. I see. So it's much as I expected. Damn, it's a pretty harsh call. What the hell? But that's just cruel and unreasonable. To obtain food and water, prisoners are forced to snitch on others, and in the process cause pain to those around them. To avoid punishment, they learn to stop talking with one another. This leaves the wounds they've already received to fester, however. And so resentment builds until every prisoner has become an island. Terrible-ass cult, what the fuck? Hmm. Finally, isolated and without hope, they accept their fate as Dujier's slaves. The whole thing is an affront to human dignity. Do you remember what happened to Paimon? She rejected all the snacks in the box once she was spooked by that black gem. Mm. She's usually all for tasty snacks, but she chose to go against her instincts after a negative experience. <laughs> what is that face? <laughs> Ugh. Is that the best example you could come up with? Anyway, Paimon still thinks she made the right decision. And never hurts to be careful. No, your decision was valid. However... It's also valid to interpret that as a decision that you only made under emotional duress. The human heart is like a raft in a vast and empty ocean. We convince ourselves that we're in control, but in truth, a single wave could sweep us off course and send us crashing into the path of a storm. Those who use fear to lead others astray must pay for that crime. Uh, his little... <laughs> cool. Does it count as a cult if they don't want to be there? I think it still does, yeah. I vow to never run away again. I vow to not speak without permission. I vow to rem keep remain... I vow to keep remain conscious while being censured. I vow to earnestly carry out any order given to me by my master, Dujier. I vow to actively denounce any behavior of my fellow society members who undermine the society's unity. I vow to voluntarily accept a fourth degree or higher punishment should I violate any part of my oath. The entire text is handwritten, the paper is creased, and the handwriting is sloppy, suggesting it was written in a state of extreme distress. It was signed at the end with a fingerprint rather than a signature. Judging from the mark, however, it certainly doesn't appear to have been made with a gentle pigment, like that of an ink pad. Is it dark? It is pretty dark. <laughs> I think I, it's this is a pretty good story quest though. I like this. I say that literally for every single story quest, but this one is actually really intriguing. I don't know why, but like the dark the dark elements kind of make me more interested. I don't know what it is. If I'm not mistaken, the space ahead should be the central area of this place. But the door has been locked. Rather than confront Dujier, I think it's more important right now for us to rescue as many society members as possible. You guys should wait here. We'll try to open the door and check out some other spots. They put all the trauma on the Fontaine story quest. They really did. Open the door. Would we have to do something to this mechanism here? Ugh, Paimon doesn't get it at all. Forget it, Paimon's just gonna do some trial and error. Mm. Average horror verse player. Alright, rotate the device to shine a light beam and activate the red device on the wall. Let's see. Whoa, it's turning! Is it because we touched this thing? Oh, the other side's open. Let's go. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh. 
It's interesting because it adds more things from real life. Yeah. And also, I I I feel like it kind of it kind of feels like true crime stories, no? Because like there's there's like such a big following for true crime stuff and just <laughs> dark aspects of life, like like crime and murder and cults and all of that, and really like messed up mysteries. So it is a little more. I guess that's you know. It also does have an effect on like, like, you know, fictional stories as well. If you include some more dark elements into them as well. My way now. Why is that Ryze hitting two, 22k with no bless? Right? I know, right? Mine's better. Mine's better. Nothing up there. Activate the mechanism in front of us first, just like before. Let's see if that changes anything. This dude had all of this built under the fortress of Meripede, and he didn't notice. I do have to ask, how did Risley not notice all of this built under the fortress? Looks like there's a mechanism that's gotten stuck. It won't turn alongside the others. Uh, is there something we can do? Stall limiting device. What is... Wait. Ah, that turns it to... I see. So what if... Okay. I think this works. Yep, there we go. Ooh! The water level's gone way up! So that's how we'll make it to the top! We. It was there before he became the Duke? Then how old is this cult? Mine's better. Freeze! Imagine if Ninja got a low tape of fate. Imagine if Ninja got a low tape of fame. Call was fairly recent. These should be the prison cells. How do I just I just wonder how do all these villain how do all these villains manage to build this entire laboratory all these fortresses under everybody's noses so easily how hmm. lots of empty cells in here Dugier's probably moved them elsewhere already Let's still rescue the ones who got left behind though every person counts It's all right 
right now. You can leave this place. No. No, I won't try to leave anymore. I I'll never try to leave again. So close to me. I don't want any trouble. No, we're not gonna do that. Please calm down. We're not bad people. We won't be able to get through to her right now. Not with the stress response in the way. Damn. I'd also guess there are many others here who are more or less like her. Let's let the guards take care of them for now and keep pushing forward. Abyss and Faisal are still in danger. Oh, all right. Let's search for an exit first. Maybe it's already there and they made use of it because no one else was using it? That could be it. Oh, what's this? I'm so hungry. Please give me something to eat. I'm begging you. Don't pass me a note. Are you trying to get us killed? Please, I'm so I'm hungry, so hungry. I'll report you if you keep this up. It's almost time for inspection. Straighten up. So hungry. So hungry. So hungry. So hungry. What follows is a constant repetition, with the handwriting becoming increasingly faint, failing to convey anything of use. The bottom half of the note is severely damaged and has a dirty shoe print on it. It looks like whoever wrote this has been taken away. Hmm. Dear Lauren, my sweetest daughter, I have no choice but to say goodbye to you in this way. Since our separation, not a moment goes by when I do not wish that I could leave the fortress of Meripede as soon as possible to, and come back to you. To go back to, the be to, no, to go back to being the father you looked up to the most. Perhaps I'm the only one who naively believes that sinners are forgiven. The moment one is handed a sentence, they are already dead, leaving only a husk of flesh that must atone. Nobody shows compassion for the flesh. It is utterly filthy and utterly worthless. Don't make the wrong choices, Lauren. Don't do bad things. Live a beautiful life. So your best to become a better you. Try to embrace all the bright things in this world and don't leave any regrets behind like I did. Do not try speaking for me. Nobody here can be trusted. They're all monsters with human faces with not the slightest shred of decency, constantly starving beyond measure. Stay far, far away from this place. No matter how you feel inside about a father like me, I still want you to know that I wish I could see you and that I love you very much. Mm. Is that the dad from Ryze's teaser? Oh, I forgot. That's kind of fucked up if it is. What's over here? Did I come from this place? I don't even know. to remove this limiter. Actually, remove this one, too. Ah, oh, shit. His grace. I'll go take a look. Who? Oh, hi. I leave this area to you. Make sure to bring everyone out safe. Understood. And please take care as well, your grace. We'll return here right away and await your orders. Mm-hmm. Just focus on the tasks you've been given. I already have reliable help over here. Let's go back. We have unfinished business, do we not? That mechanism from the first room. Maybe we'll also need to hold it in place using the same device to open the door that leads to the central area. Don't forget to bring these along. Uh. The guards from the Fortress of Meripede have already taken control of this area. You're safe now.
Oh, we can see everyone else now. We've seen this knot, right? Here we have. How about this dude? Someone help this dude. Someone help this man out. <laughs> He's being left behind. <laughs> hell. Hey man, someone help him. What the hell? Can you use the blender for two minutes? Yeah, go ahead. Be fine. <laughs> go ahead, baby. See how these rotate. Do I need to? Oh yeah, there is the limiting one. Let's see. Okay, I think I know what to do. I have to keep rotating this one. I have to put the limiter on the top left over here. Because it lines up perfectly like this. Yeah. Yo! Yeah. I'm just that guy. Light work for me. <laughs> Light work. Is there anything over here? No, it's just a door. Making a protein shake? Nice. <laughs> so I look dapper. Just a collared. I think collared shirts make anyone look dapper. Maybe that's why that's maybe that's why rich people just wear collared shirts as like their casual wear because they always look sophisticated that way. What's over here? Have I been here before? I think I've been here before. Where am I going? I don't know. I'm gonna go back. There's a control panel in the prison that had extra lore about the cult. I didn't see. It. Where could that be? Can I talk in a British accent to keep your British fans entertained? Um. Oh, wait, is it this one? It's this one. This seems to be something like a console. Wait, is it that? This is a surveillance terminal. Uh -huh. The information collected by the surveillance ports we found previously will be sent here. I'm sure Dugier really enjoyed sitting here and making his people dance like puppets on strings. Oh, that makes Paimon even angrier! Hmm. Is it the same dialogue? This is <laughs> it is. I'm sure Dugier... Just say mate a lot. I know some British people say bruv a lot. Bruv. Dang, it's a whole meeting over here. Wait, these are wait. This is the most amount of NPCs I've been, I've seen in one area in such a long time. I don't even think the <laughs> I don't even think the freaking what was it called the Opera Epicles has this many people sitting in one place. 
<laughs> I must confess to being furious. To think that there are still some of you who find it permissible to spit upon our rules. Remember their names. Fasal and Avis. They've betrayed you, betrayed us. And today you will see with your own eyes what'll happen to those who betray our cause. Dang. Go on, Avis. Pierce his skull with the thorn in your hands, and then push in the Aqua Dolores. Of course, you will do it one drop at a time. Let it do its magic again and again, and don't stop until you've pushed all of it in. That's all. I'm sorry. It... It's okay. I'll... Find a way to endure. Oh, shut your wretched mouths! When did I give you permission to speak? My rules are the paramount law of this place. Only more pain will come to those who dare to disobey. Uh oh, dog on attack mode. That's enough, Dugier. Your rabid screams have been beyond nauseating. <laughs> Is that his grace? Oh, Risley. I knew you would come. But I didn't expect you to be so quick. Must you still refuse to let me be? Did I not spell everything out for you already? What's so blasphemous about sharing a slice of the cake with me when you've already got the entire fortress at your feet? It would seem that you can't see the difference between sharing and looting. And on top of that, look at your people. Are they not starving as you wolf down your cake? True. Stop acting all high and mighty like some hero of justice. <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny just seeing Nick. <laughs> Look if I saw in the background just stuck inside of the thing. You can only see his head. It's so funny. I'm sorry. I know that's a torture machine, but like it's I'm sorry. Have you forgotten? Nobody in this blasted fortress is innocent. We are all irredeemable monsters who have destroyed something that others held dear. What's so wrong about punishing those who deserve to be punished? It's what they've always deserved. And please, are you really going to tell me that you care about their lives and well-being when you just need a supply of labor to keep this place running? Is it that all you need to keep your cushy life? Sadly, you're wrong on both counts. Unlike you, I've never seen them as currency. The fortress is not only a place for confinement, but also a place for rebirth. Just as people are free to give in to the darkness within their hearts, they are also free to seek redemption and a new beginning. Our bodies have limits, but our spirits will always remain free. They may have made mistakes, but they are still human beings with people and things that they cherish. And most importantly, they should always retain the freedom to choose their own path once they've reflected on their past misdeeds. Yeah. But you, you're destroying their spirits with fear, taking their freedom away so that they'll become slaves who will never again feel or think. And you say that's what they've always deserved? You are nothing compared to them. Get his ass. He, he's really mad. I feel the same way. I mean, he he's right. He could have... If he, if you really think about it, he could have done the same exact thing. He could have, he could have actually started like a re a reform group or like, um, he actually could have started like a support group for people to actually, you know, be able to reform themselves and eventually, you know, accept who they used to be and become a new person. But no, he had to start a cult. He had to start a cult, didn't he? Hmm. Bro had the complete. He had a completely twisted idea of, like, reformation. Hmm. You think me arrogant, Risley. Well, I think you're too young and naive. You understand nothing of this world. Nobody actually sees this fortress as any kind of just a wonderful place. See it for what it is. A dumping ground of pain and misery, irredeemable now and irredeemable forever! No prisoner will listen to you out of gratitude of their hearts. The whip is the only way to make them obey. Had you been just one step slower, I would have already taken control of all the garden mechs in this place. Your vision gives you strength. But how long will it hold against these powerful constructs? 
You talk big, but in the end, you know nothing outside of power and control. In that case, let me give you a small taste of what real power looks like. He's so cool. He's so cool. Go, go, Baron Bunny! Owie. A moment, please. He was projecting so hard, he really was. I think it was it's just him that was the irredeemable person the entire time. You hate this guy so much, everyone knows what he sounds like. Yeah. Let's begin. Ryze was nice enough to make the fortress better, but Dujiera was jealous of the rank of the Duke and seemed to find a way to reach his ranks in a slimy way. Yeah. think fear can control everything well then terrify me don't high road me you're just another crook and it's time he got treated. oh he's got a gun oh shit he's got a gun oh can't aim never mind <laughs> damn you suck ass uh oh what's the matter too scared to shoot straight? Uh, I'm warning you! Unauthorized punishment and torture are prohibited here! As the Duke, you should set an example! Funny how that slipped my mind. Well, from this point on, you can forget about that rule. The rules of the fortress are there to keep the likes of you in check. But if the Duke wants somebody dead, he needs no justification. Understood. He's so cool. He's so cool. Me next? Okay. Alrighty. Alright. God, you wish that was me. God, you wish that were you, huh? Hmm. The guards rescue the society members who have been imprisoned at the true headquarters. Risley spends much time with each member confronting them and extending his personal apologies. Following that, he makes arrangements for follow-up medical care and cleanup work. And thus does the Beret Society debacle truly come to an end. Sorry for taking so long. Did I keep you waiting? No, not at all. Paimon didn't know you were so considerate. <laughs> if you ask me, I'd say I actually feel very helpless. There's no way that I could truly empathize with the fear that the members felt every day. I could comfort and compensate them all I want, but it might still not be enough to repair the damage that has been done. Yeah, they have some, uh, that's... I don't think any cult member is going to be able to recover from that easily. I have to take responsibility for it, as does the fortress. Mm. <clears throat> mm. I've, at least we were able to stop it before it got any worse, right? I mean, it was still pretty bad, though. Uh. Yeah, it's the least that we could do. So, do you have a plan for how you're going to deal with him yet? Oh, Dugier? I've already got an idea. For now, I think I'll do nothing. I think it's a very fitting punishment for him to have to imagine the sorts of punishments that will soon be coming his way. He'll be left in the dark with regards to both the dates and the details of his punishment. Of course, that's not to say that I'll be letting him off scot-free. It's not often that I actually get the chance to be creative with my punishments. Uh I'm going to talk to the members of the society. He'll get a chance to experience everything that he's ever inflicted on them. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess so, yeah. Good idea. 
could also be so harsh. Looks like she should watch her tongue when she's around you in the future. Hmm. Why do you think I'd do that kind of thing to you? You offend me, Paimon. <laughs> anyway, jokes aside, thank you so much for all of your help. There's still a lot for me to take care of, so... How about this? I'll treat you to a meal in two days at the Coupon Cafeteria. We should have a better handle on things by then. Uh, no, Paimon's had enough of that place. Don't worry, it won't be the same old welfare meal. I'll make the necessary arrangements. Oh, then you've got yourself a deal! Uh, Paimon can't, can't stand being humble for once. She never wants to eat anything. Less than a five-star meal. Nothing less than the finest cuisines in Tevat. Oh yeah, it's like two days, I forgot. Time for a time skip. How's the request so far? I think this one is actually really good. I like this one. This one has intrigued me a lot. And it gives me a lot more respect for Risley as well. I thought that they were going to explain like how he became a how he became a prisoner. Or like what he did to get sent here. But maybe um Maybe they just leave that as a mystery because he doesn't like to talk about himself that much. Ah, you're here. Hi. Paimon never forgets about meals. Even if the traveler forgets, Paimon will remind him for sure. <laughs> you say that as if I haven't been feeding you or something. Uh, that's not what Paimon meant at all. Paimon meant, right? Hmm? I'm a little confused, actually. <laughs> hey, not you too! He's on my side. Thank God. Bless up. We got one on our side. Jokes aside, I've got some good news. After taking a look, the doctors have let me know that it shouldn't be too difficult to extract the thorns. Which means that everyone should be able to recover after a period of rest. As for their mental recoveries, most are making good progress as well. We've added a few who were more severely affected to a special observation list. You sure got everything taken care of, Risley. I try my best. After all, it's my duty to take care of everything that happens within my territory. I have a question for you, actually. Please, go ahead. Your flashbacks when you picked up the gem. Ah, that's a bit of a long story. I once had a similar experience. It had to do with the host family I lived with as a child. Mm. I was an orphan, adopted by a couple with a great deal of love in their hearts. I had many siblings, and we all adored each other. Oh, so he was an orphan. Once we were older, mom and dad would turn us over to be individually adopted by families of greater means, and go on to adopt more young children. Wait, what? Wait. They would turn her- they would turn them over to be individually adopted by families of greater means and go on to adopt more young children? Oh. They were perfect parents. Or so I thought. And then? And then, I found out we were merely raised as livestock. Once we had reached a certain age, our parents would bring us to the market for sale. Oh. Well, that explains the the weird feeling I got when I was hearing that they would adopt more and more children once they got old enough. Well, that's fucked up. All children that were sold would leave the house, and nobody would know what became of them. As for those who didn't sell, they were merely disposed of. Did you know I once considered myself an extremely lucky child? And all of my friends, all of my siblings, they all felt this way as well. I was also not the first to find out about the truth. All those who found out before me were simply added to the disposal pile. I could never shake the feeling of irony every time I juxtaposed their tragic ends against our parents' adoring smiles. Mm, that explains a lot. Yes. 
Like the society, my parents created a facade of joy, lied to satiate their desires, and even employed incredibly cruel methods to keep their grasp on power. They did all of that, but never considered how their actions would utterly ruin all the children they took under their wing. Worse, perhaps they never cared about that at all. Mm. But I did. So in the end, I killed them and set all of the remaining children free. I was convicted for my crimes and exiled to the fortress of Meripede. Interesting. Hmm. That explains it. Hmm. Promise Neverland? Yeah, it does sound like the Promise Neverland plot, doesn't it? Hmm. He's like, I'm not that interesting that proceeds to have one of the wildest backstories. Yes. Yeah, pretty fucked up. My methods were extreme, yes. But I was still a teenager at the time. I'd been betrayed by those I trusted most. And I didn't think that more moderate ways would solve the problem. My doubt and helpless anger pushed me forward until I got what I deserved. Mm. You do not trust the justice system? I mean, if they're able to do that for a while without even getting... Without having a hint of whether or not they're going to be punished for it... I wouldn't trust it either. And considering if you okay, this might be a little dark, but considering considering things like Jeffrey Epstein's island and how it was able to go for so long without it being, you know, without all those celebrities being discovered to have gone to that island and participating in those kind of things, I wouldn't trust the system either to enact some sort of justice against those kind of things. So no, I don't blame anybody for, I don't, I wouldn't blame him for, you know, taking matters into their own hands. So. Uh. That's why the ocean is left, Fonte. Yeah, maybe that's why the ocean is left, Fonte. Fonte, it's kind of fucked up, man. What the hell? I don't see nobody in Mostad doing this kind of shit. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell is going on over here? Man, they got someone else inside the water. What the hell? They say Fontaine water is the most pure or best tasting? Nah, they got someone else in here. What the hell? Nah. It's alright. You don't have to tell me what you think. I've already committed to this path, regardless of what anyone may say about it. The least I can do is to make sure that the same tragedy will not happen again in my new home. Sorry to disturb you, everyone. Hi, Vies. Oh, it's a are you two feeling better yet? It was all because you arrived in time. I managed to escape unscathed. Glad to hear it. We came here on impulse today because we were hoping that you'd be able to lend us a hand, Your Grace. Please, go on right ahead. I'll do my best to help. Within reason, of course. It's... <clears throat> I'd like to be wedded to Avis here at the fortress. Aww. Aww. Yeah, we met each other through the society and both fell into Dugier's trap. But even during our time there, we never doubted each other. We always believed that Dugier was manipulating us, trying to make us mistrust each other. And after this incident, we've come to believe that we've found the one for the rest of our lives. That's so cute. <laughs> even in the worst of times, love prevails. <laughs> You could say we managed to make the best out of a bad situation. He didn't abandon me, and I didn't forsake him either. But we're still both prisoners. And we also aren't sure if the fortress is the best place to host something so celebratory. So we are just wondering, is our request a bit too out of line? Hmm. You're right in that the fortress has never hosted a wedding before. But that's no reason to say no, is it? I'll help you make the arrangements. If you need anything special shipped in from the surface, just say the word. Oh, we can't thank you enough, Your Grace. We are actually also planning to stay here after the conclusion of our sentences. Yeah, we've already made tons of special memories here. So now, it'd be too hard to leave. That's cute. And we have full confidence in the fortress's future with you at the helm, Your Grace. Your trust is the highest form of praise. Hey, listen up! Bit. Shouldn't you be the happiest man in Tevac to hear that people would like to stay of their own free will? Mm. Yeah, 
Yeah. I'll always take a genuine expression of faith over any obligation to obey. That's cute. What about about uh Monster and oh yeah, they did have their history of the history of slavery in the in the comics. I forgot about that. I for I completely forgot about that actually. But maybe Monstat isn't so Yeah, maybe Monstat isn't so uh clean. What about Leeway? What about Leeway? Hmm. God remains? Hmm. War? I mean, there was the Archon War. More actually, like Thousands of Gods. That was all Morax is doing, not the people is doing, however. Now the problem with homeless people? Hmm. They would just has war. Yeah, I guess war is just pretty bad as well. Oh, people trying to aggressively dig holes at you. <laughs> uh, in comparison, it's less. I think, okay. I, I would say, like, recently. I would say in recent times, Fontaine has had a pretty fucked up history. Or at least, like, in, like in recent times, Fontaine has been pretty fucked up with all the things that have been going on in Fontaine. Compared to everyone, to, compared to everywhere else, like Mondstadt, Mondstadt's pretty chill, at least right now. Yes, there was slavery, but right now, I think it's gotten better. At least that's what it seems on the surface. Right now, Mondstadt is very chill. Leeway, eh. Leeway is kind of eh, because you know of all the things happening with the Fatui, and as well as like the chasm and all of that. Inazuma, we already know. Inazuma, we already know. They've only, you know, recently got out, gone out of their uh, Sakuko decree and all of that. Sumeru, with the uh, with all of the Darshans and everything, we know that they're not clean out. They're not clean out there. Fontaine though is fucked up. Fontaine, though, is pretty fucked up. Like, they've got regular people out here literally trafficking children and shit. Like, what? What the hell? What the hell going on over here, man? They were also got attacked by giant sea monsters twice? Yeah, that's true. And that's it. And that is it. They ran out of hobbies. Like, damn, y'all got theaters, y'all got y'all got robots, y'all got like cameras. Y'all got all the things in the world, and you chose to, to traffic children? What the hell? What? What is going on? Have you seen Ganyu's new drip? I have. It's a very pretty dress, but I don't think I'm, I'm not gonna get it, because it's obviously gonna have to be paid for. <laughs> best I could do is... The <laughs> best I could do is sing shows for Rina drip. Montaigne got a lot of issues because their Archon is mostly focused on the prophecy, which neglected the little human issues. That's true. But I would say Nuvulet still has to, like... Nuvulet still has a hand in, in handling all of that, doesn't he? They also do have a better justice system, because, like, at the same time, no other nation has, like, a court system in place, do they? Like, you could see people, you know, they have guards around, they have people arresting others, but, like, they don't really have, like, a court system. Never got my welfare meal? Oh, true. What is this guy? Oh, wow, wait, there's a lot of recipes I never got here. I never got any of these recipes. Welfare meal, please.
You let us grant his job? Yeah, he's doing pretty good so far. The way and Fontaine are big are big on laws. Yeah. In slightly different ways. Yeah. Like that Farina has completely unique gnosis compared to other, every other Fontanian? Yeah, because it's dragon signed. Actually sovereign signed. Sovereign certified. I don't know, man. Fontaine has been pretty messed up so far. Like, they have... Like, these recent story quests and world quests and just everything, they've been... Wow. It's, it's just wow. Holy shit. Like, it's a nice change of pace, I will say. It's a, it's a nice change of pace from, like, the, you know, the usual... Light-hearted stuff as well as you know, just keeping it light nothing too serious or too dark, but damn <laughs> damn <laughs> That's all I could say is damn. It's really that bad over here <laughs> New village story quest broke you yeah new village story quest is really messed up they bullied a- they bullied a fucking Melusine into killing herself, that's crazy. What the hell? That's so- that's so messed up. You ever finished the Anapazis quest? No, I haven't. I haven't finished any of, like, the world quests. I haven't done the Nazis and Kites one. I need to do that one. I have a lot of world quests to do after I'm finished with all the story quests and hangouts. One more? No. Not one more. Not via time, not today. Next stream, maybe. Maybe the next stream or the, or the stream after. It's going to crescendo. We're going to for we're going forward to what's gonna happen in, in Natalan. Natalan, I'm kind of afraid to see what they do with Natalan because if they, I feel like Fontaine is them dipping their hands into seeing how dark they could go with the with the fan base or like the uh, the readers actually being able to handle. Because they've been kind of slowly <sighs> digging into it, you know, with all of like the with like you know the comics, with like the man or like the uh monk. Like the comics and all of that, you know, with the Tore story being kind of fucked up, as well as with the Fatui members. And now they're like kind of actually putting their hand kind of slow, like deeper into it, incorporating it more into like the story quests and the Archon quests. I think with Natan, they're gonna go full on in with it and showing like how fucked up war can be and how fucked up things can be in the world in Teyvat. Because in Natlan, they are in a war, I'm pretty sure I remember reading correctly. So, they they do have a they do have a decision on whether or not they want to show how messed up war, war truly can be. Natlan, everything be like, child soldier. Yeah, they could do that. Navi, Navi Story Quest is so good? I know. I know, I've heard good things about Navi Story Quest. I'm gonna see it next stream. Don't worry. I will do it next stream. Or the stream after that, because I do want to do Star Rail and claim Doctor Ratio. Also, I do have to do this event that ends in two days. I'll see when I do that. I might do it off stream, I'm not sure. I'll have to, I'll have to see. <clears throat> After stream, please accept your birthday art. Wait, I'll check on the art tag. It is. Wait, I like this. Wait, let me see. Hold on. I like this. I look like I look like a Charlie Brown character. 
I like that. That's cute. That's a good birthday art. I like that. Thank you, Zoe. The 23. 23. I'm unk. I'm actually unk. <laughs> I'm unk. Thank you, Zoe. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Very cute birthday art. You love the peanut sauce, so you want to do it in- you want to do me in that style? I'm glad. That's a very cool art style to do it in. Thank you. Thank you, Zilly. Youth pastor? <laughs> yeah, I have two- I have two sides of me. Unk and youth pastor. <laughs> Unk and youth pastor over here. The duality of WAP. But thank you, Zelle. Very, very nice art. And also, thank you all for like the birthday wishes. It's been a few days. I enjoyed my birthday very much. Thank you. <laughs> Make them go. <clears throat> thank you. You guys, up with Lenny and Fontaine might be setting you up for actually starting with the Fatui by the time you get to Snesh Naya. Could be right about that. I mean, they have been kind of setting that up for a while, especially with like the world quest and even the ones in uh, the chasm. I think the ones in the chasm are definitely like a hint of them wanting to show that the Fatuis are more nuanced and they're not all that bad as they seem. There's definitely going to be some sort of plot point with siding with the Fatuis. Which would be an interesting arc for the Traveler, but I guess we'll see how they play that out. Hopefully it's not terrible, but same. You had, to, you had to lug my birthday gifts all the way? She did. And it was very nice. Actually, there's one right over here. This one. Legos. She bought me Legos for my birthday. Yes, I love Legos. Yes, I am 23 and I love Legos. So what? Alright? So what? A lot of the female Fatui characters are hot as hell, so you you are a lesbian and you are 100% on board with more quests that have you working with them. That's hey. Uncle loves Legos? <laughs> Why had to put it that way? You bought Legos for your friend too? Legos are a good gift. I feel like Legos are a universal gift that everyone should be able to accept. Legos are the best gift of all time. They're not hard to build as long as you follow the instructions, and they just have limitless possibilities as long, as long as you have some sort of creativity inside your brain. Anyone could do that. Anyone could build Lego. R2-D2. We'll build, we'll build the R2-D2 later. Maybe I'll do an R2-D2 building stream or something. That'd be nice. Priority of Legos, buying Legos for a, buying Legos for someone as a gift versus wishing someone steps on Legos as a threat. Okay. <laughs> True. It could be a wonderful gift or a dangerous weapon. All right, but anyways, I'm gonna log off because I want to go out with Celeste now and spend some time with her. Uh. Yep, anyways. Anyways.